Michael Grego is a physician, an author, an internationally recognised professional speaker on a number of important health issues. Dr. Greger has lectured at the Conference on World Affairs, the National Institutes of Health, and the International Bird Flu Summit, among countless other symposia and institutions. And you may have heard that he was invited as the expert, um, expert witness in defense of Oprah Winfrey at that infamous meat defamation trial. Currently, Dr. Greger proudly serves as the Director of Public Health and Animal Agriculture at the HSUS, the Humane, Humane Society of the US. He's written some excellent books. If you haven't read them, I really urge you to do so. Um, his book, Bird Flu, A Virus of Our Own Hatching, is um, phenomenally topical and relevant today, and we're selling it outside. He's also written Carbophobia, The Scary Truth Behind America's, and of course the UK's, Low Carb Craze. Um, Viva and VVF both sell both of these books. We also sell his DVDs, um, including one that I absolutely love and have given to so many people, which is called Stopping Cancer Before It Starts. And although that C word, cancer, seems really scary and you might think it's a depressing DVD, it's actually the opposite. It's really uplifting and will inspire anybody, whether they're worried about cancer or not, actually, um, to go vegan. It's brilliant because it doesn't just talk about the disease in itself. It tells you how plants protect your health. Why is a vegan diet so phenomenally helpful for the human species? So I highly recommend that too. Dr. Greger is also licensed as a general practitioner. He specializes in clinical nutrition and was a founding member of the American College of Lifestyle Medicine. Um, he was featured on the Healthy Living Channel promoting his latest nutrition DV um, and was honored to teach part of Professor Colin Campbell's esteemed nutrition course at Cornell University. And again, just a little plug for Professor Colin Campbell's book, The China Study, because it is a phenomenally brilliant book. If you've not already read it, you really should. It's very easy to read, too. Um, if we have time, we've also got an, another excellent speaker, Anthony Aurelius, who's the UK's number one fitness expert, who also happens to be vegan, who will be talking about getting the most out of your diet um, if you're exercising, and also, through gentle exercise, how to make yourself the healthiest you possibly can be, and that will be after Michael Gregor if we have time today. Um, he's um, very prominent, does loads of media, and an excellent speaker, so hopefully we will. Dr. Gregor is a graduate of Cornell, um, Cornell University School of Agriculture and the Tofts University School of Medicine. Um, I'm just so honored to have him here today and can't wait for today. I've been very excited about it. Um, if you're not already a member of Viva or the Vegetarian and Vegan Foundation, please be so because we're completely reliant, completely reliant on public donations and we can only put on events like this through the support of good people like yourself. So with no further ado, please will you all welcome Dr. Michael Greger. Good afternoon. Every year, I read through every issue of every English language nutrition journal in the world. Why do I do this? Because when it comes to nutrition, I'm not interested in opinion. I'm not interested in beliefs. I'm not interested in dogma, vegetarian or otherwise. I'm interested in science. What does the best available data show right now? Almost everything I'm going to show you has been published just over the last 12 months in the peer-reviewed scientific medical literature. This is the kind of stuff that won't even make it into the dietitian textbooks for another few years, truly the latest in cutting-edge nutritional science. And in that time, more than 5,000 articles were published on human nutrition. 5,582 articles which I mine for the most interesting, the most practical, the most groundbreaking work, and I could just drone on and on about how this new study show this, that new study show that, or I could somehow compile all the results of this new research into a quiz show format. In a few moments I'm going to ask everyone to uh, get up. The first game we're going to play, pull back the curtain, is called Harmful, harmless, or helpful. I'll throw up a food item. You'll all be standing. 
And with a show of hands, you'll tell me, um, uh, based on the best research in the last year, whether what I have pictured is harmful, harm less or helpful nutritionally, bad for, a good, bad for you, neither good nor bad, or good for you, based again on the latest science published over the last year. If you get it right, you get to remain standing. If you get it wrong, you've got to sit down. We'll keep going and see who the last person is standing. Any questions before we begin? Doesn't anybody want to know what they win? The last person standing each round will win a, a special CD-ROM I created containing 1,000 of the great, latest, greatest articles on nutrition categorized by topic. Your own personal nutrition library on a disc, it's not for sale. You have to win it. All right, everybody ready? Everybody on your feet? First up, artificial colors. Who thinks artificial colors are harmful or bad for you? Raise your hand. Who thinks artificial colors are harmless? Raise your hand. And how many people think scientists just discovered they're good for you in some way? Anybody? And the answer is harmful. 34 years ago, Chief of Pediatrics Ben Feingold published heresy suggesting that artificial food colorings could so damage a child's developing nervous system that it could actually affect their behavior. Now, Dow Chemical disagreed, as did Coca-Cola, the $200 billion food industry at the time, and they were able to convince the medical establishment that, uh, that such claims were ridiculous, but the truth can only be buried so long. And this randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled trial was published in the most prestigious medical journal in the world, published here in the UK, showing that artificial colors increased impulsivity, inattentiveness, and hyperactivity among young children. So there have been repeated calls within the medical literature now to better regulate or ban artificial colors altogether. So if you haven't already, anyone who voted harmless or helpful, please sit down. We'll go on to the next round. Fact or fiction? There's a food color made out of crushed bugs. Who says fact? Raise your hand. Who says fiction? Anybody? All right. Fact. And here she is, the pregnant cochineal beetle. So if you said fiction, please sit down, have a seat. This is what it looks like when you smush them. This is what it looks like when you lick them. And it doesn't say contains bugs on the label. It says things like color added, if you can see that. Or here, I believe it's called E120. Um, so when parents feed their kids yogurt, for example, they may be feeding them a strawberry splash of boiled insects. Who cares, though? Kind of gross, but harmful? I mean, bug juice is, after all, a natural color. Nothing artificial about bugs, right? So. Um, uh, and in fact, the reason that they use um, bugs now is because some of the artificial um, uh, red dyes, like red number three, were banned as carcinogens. I believe it was food red 14 here in the UK. Bug dye is natural, but who thinks still harmful? Raise your hand. Who thinks, ah, gross, but harmless? <coughs> Anyone think maybe they could use the extra protein? All right. And the answer? Cochineal beetle extract is harmful. Sends hundreds of people to the hospital every year, so potentially dangerous that the Center for Science of Public Interest has called for all bug-based dyes to be exterminated. Now, the U.S. government refuses to ban it, but they did announce that this year they'll actually start requiring it on labels. Um, uh, good news for those of us who would rather listen to the beetles rather than eat them. Um, of course, the labeling law won't go into effect until 2011, um, but until then I have a suggestion for food companies. Should you want your cherry popsicles to be red, how about adding some cherries? 